the dust has settled, the transfers have been made, recruits have committed. So now, where does Indiana fall in the Big Ten for men's basketball? You are Locked On Hoosiers, your daily podcast on the Indiana Hoosiers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome in, guys, to another episode of Locked On Hoosiers. Excuse me. It is Friday, June 17th. Uh, Thank you guys for making Locked On Hoosiers your first listen every day. We're your one-stop shop for everything uh, IU athletics-related news analysis. We have you guys covered. Uh, Today's episode is brought to you by Rock Auto. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need, visit rockauto.com. Tell them that Locked On sent you. Look, there was a lot of uncertainty for a while when it came to the Big Ten for men's basketball. Who was staying? Who was going? Where were transfers committing? All that dust has kind of settled. The result is it looks like the Hoosiers might be uh, one of the very best teams in the conference this upcoming season. We're going to take a look at that today, and to do that, I brought on my friend, hopefully your guys' as well, former running buddy over at Crimson Quarry, now over uh, at Bedford uh, as a journalist over there, Austin. Austin, bud, uh, this is an awesome time to be an IU basketball fan, is it not? Uh, I, I mean, this is the best. Um, after spending a long time in the desert, that is known as Ar- Archie Miller. Uh, this is, it's just been so fun to kind of uh, fall back in love with Indiana basketball. Um, I, I mean, you know, I haven't felt this way about a basketball team since the 2015 16 team. Uh, you know, I just, I love the coaches, love the players. There's just, it feels good to be an Indiana basketball fan, which is a really refreshing change of pace. Uh, considering where we're coming from here over the last couple years, few years. Felt, I like that term falling in love with him again because it felt like for so long it was this, uh, I don't even know, it was this chore to watch Indiana basketball and to be an Indiana basketball fan. And there was a sense of dread that came along with it. And now I I look forward. I see, I seek out IU basketball news. There's a lot of times that I that I was worried what I would see if I looked up IU basketball news. So uh, when you looking at it this uh, the spring, this summer, everything was coming up IU basketball, uh, whether it was Trace's decision, whether it was Malik Renault committing, whatever it's been, I feel like feels like everything has been going IU's way. The end result now that as I said, the dust has kind of settled. Is IU the best team in the Big Ten heading into next season? I think Indiana has to be the preseason favorite. I mean, you look at where they are uh, compared to some of the other contenders within the conference. I- Indiana, I believe, has the perfect mixture of talent and continuity. There are some other contenders that have the talent, uh, but they don't have the continuity. Uh, you know, you look at Illinois with some of those transfers coming in. I mean, you lose uh, some guys, uh, obviously, who graduated or went to the draft. Um, and, you know, it's like they, they could be good. They'll be contenders. But, you know, it might take them a little bit to gel. Uh, they have talent, but maybe not the continuity you'd like. You look at other teams and maybe they have continuity, but they don't have the talent that you'd like. Uh, so I, I think that Indiana just kind of has – that mixture that nobody else in the league can match, at least on paper at this point in the year. And I think that that'll give them a a big boost as we get into the season. And yeah, that's, I think the the perfect way to frame it because there are a number of ways to, to look at it, but Indiana has this blend of a team that was really peaking at the end of the season uh, and bringing most of that back, adding some five-star recruits to it. And, adding some talent to where that continuity was. And if you kind of look across the board, there are various um, preseason or way too early rankings or whatnot. I tried to grab uh, a variety of them. If you look at SB Nation with Mike Rutherford, um, he did the top 40 teams, but Indiana was the top Big Ten team listed at 13. Uh, You had Illinois at 23 and Ohio State at 24. 
Uh, if you look at inside the hall, they have Indiana as the top team. If you look at Andy Katz, he had Indiana as the top team. If you look over at Busting Brackets, which I only mentioned because I used to write there, uh, they have Indiana as the top team. Uh, so no matter, it seems like where you look, um, Indiana is the top team going into this. And to your point, if you look at kind of returning production, John Rothstein last week had a tweet um, just listing the returning scoring by percentage for the Big Ten teams. Indiana is returning 90.9% of its scoring. Next closest is Northwestern at 61%. Uh, and then you have Rutgers at 59%. And to your point, if you look at an Illinois, they're second worst at 16.4%. Ohio State, who I mentioned at 13.9%. So Indiana has returning production that isn't there for other teams. How much does it help to have so much of your core coming back for next season? I think it makes this team kind of ready-made. I mean, there should be no first month where they're they're feeling each other out or, you know, there's no, oh, you know, they need to learn Coach Woodson's system or, oh, you, you know, I, I just I, – it eliminates excuses because, you know, you do have pretty much your entire rotation back. Uh, I mean, maybe if you want to, you know, say, okay, well, there, there needs to be time for your Malik Renaults, your, your, your Jalen Hood Shafinos to adjust to the college game. Okay. I can see that. That's the one thing that could be a wild card for them early in the season. But other than that, I mean, you know, you've got Trace Jackson Davis. You've got Xavier Johnson. You've got these guys who have been leaders in this program before, and they're back. They're ready to do it again. So Indiana should be able to hit the ground running. I don't see any reason why they won't, because they have the guys you need to just take off straight from the get-go. There shouldn't be an adjustment period. Yeah, and I think it kind of, as you said last season, that first month was kind of a an on-ramp into the Mike Woodson era. That's gone. You're you're on the freeway now. You're on the interstate. You're flying high straight from the get-go. I think I use schedule kind of reflects that change in philosophy a little bit next season. It's going to be much more daunting, but that's what you want if you have a team that looks this good. Is there even a consensus to you of who the next best team or best teams are in the Big Ten? I mean, you know, if you, you look at what people want to say, uh, I think Illinois is – in that, you know, tier behind IU. Uh, I mean, Illinois fans will tell you that Illinois is the best team in the Big Ten. Uh, they don't care. Uh, you know, Bloomington is a joke or whatever. Uh, they, they love to tell John Rothstein that they're very good, actually. Um, and, you know, you, you look at, obviously, the Michigan States, Michigan. I, I mean, those those are the other teams that I, I think people are, are talking about. But I, I think that the fact that there isn't a clear-cut second-best team behind Indiana – kind of tells you that Indiana is the top team because, you know, you're having a conversation about who's number two. I, I think that, you know, people want to have a conversation about who's number one. I just don't think that it's there, really. I, I would say you can look at Indiana and pick out, like, three-point shooting is still going to be a big question. But really, that's kind of one of the only questions you have about this team. And it's a very... I don't want to say minute, but it's kind of a specific part of the game uh, that that you're questioning. When you look at a, an Illinois, that, there's whole like wholesale turnover. You lose Trent Frazier, Alfonso Plummer, uh, obviously Kofi Coburn, uh, Curbelo, uh, Grandison. All those guys are out, and while they were active in the transfer portal, while they get a guy like Sky Clark uh, from the 2022 class. That's a lot of turnover that you're going to have to uh, figure out. And, I mean, we saw IU last season having to figure out that turnover uh, and having so many new faces. And I think that's like a, a huge question you have with them. If you look at a, a Michigan State, I mean, they have a nucleus, a, a strong core returning, but there isn't really like that, that top guy that can lead them. Um, so you wonder just how high they can get. Um, I, you, I've seen Ohio state as well. I mean, we mentioned, uh, Mike Rutherford, he has them next. If you want to talk about a team that just lost so much, uh, again, I mean, John Rothstein, they're the lowest team in turn of, in terms of 
returning production from last season. So again, it's the same thing as Illinois. You're having to replace a ton of people through the transfer portal. I mean, they had a really good recruiting class, but uh, there's an adjustment period that's going to be there for a lot of those teams that isn't going to be there for Indiana. They have the the star power. They have the core coming back. Uh, they have the young talent added. It's this perfect blend that has IU in this really uh, unfamiliar position relative to recent seasons of uh, being potentially the best team in the Big Ten next season. We're going to look at some of the specifics and some of the players that are going to be among the best in the Big Ten. Obviously, Trace Jackson Davis here in a moment. First, though, Bet Online is your number one source for all your your betting stats and sports info. Find all the latest sports developments, news, and odds, including this year's NBA Finals, which may be over by the time you're listening to this. We're recording it on Thursday afternoon. Uh, the NHL Conference Final, or excuse me, Stanley Cup now. Uh, MLB, and of course, all the latest fighting news from MMA and UFC to boxing. They also have futures odds for um, college basketball and the national title. You can look. Uh, Indiana is now at 33 to 1 odds. They were at 6 to 1 odds pre Trace Jackson Davis decision. Uh, what do you think about those title odds, Austin? How much money should I be putting down on that? Well, I, I think that thirty-three to one—that's that's a value there. Uh, I mean, I think the the most interesting thing is you look at that sort of impact that TJD had. I think that tells you what kind of player he is, even if certain fan bases want you to believe otherwise. Uh, he's definitely a big-time guy, uh, and I think he does kind of take Indiana to that next level and make them a real contender. And nobody else had nearly as drastic of a change in their uh, title odds as Indiana did with that trace decision, uh, which, yeah, to that point. I mean, the only other one that was close is Gonzaga uh, with Drew Timmy, but, I mean, they were already one of the favorites, and they remain one of the favorites. It's going to be interesting, too, because uh, there's a lot of teams on here that Indiana is going to play. One of Duke or UNC, you would assume, with the ACC Big Ten Challenge. Kansas, Arizona, uh, some Big Ten teams in there. So uh, we're going to find out a lot about this IU team this season. But if you guys want to make your bets on that or any of the things, the finals, Stanley Cup, anything we mentioned, Bet Online is your continued source for all your sporting wagering information, including live betting, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet online where the game starts. We have an important favor to ask you. We've put together a survey so we can learn more about listeners like you and make your favorite locked on podcast even better. This is your opportunity to tell us what you like and don't like about locked on podcasts. Go to lockedonpodcast.com slash survey right now to get started. It's not going to take you very long. And everyone that completes the survey can qualify for a chance to win a uh, $10-$100 Ticketmaster gift card. You can basically go to a concert on us if you win. Uh, go take or to take the audience survey, excuse me, go to lockedonpodcast.com slash survey. Thank you for your help. Also want to thank you guys for making a locked on Hoosiers your first listen every day. On top of Indiana being uh it seems like, at least going in, the, the consensus preseason favorite for the Big Ten, they're going to be, they're going to have one of the top players in the country in the Big Ten as well in Trace Jackson Davis. Uh, if you look at the top returning list for the country as a whole, Trace is among typically the top five, top ten at worst. Andy Wittry, Andy Katz both had Trace at number four among the top returning players in the nation. This is kind of a, a, a specific question, but when's the last time you can remember Indiana having a top returning player like this, uh, whether relative to the conference or the nation as a whole? Man, I, I mean, you're really in this realm picking out like a, a, a select list of names uh, of dudes in this caliber. I mean, you know, you look at Yogi Ferrell coming back, uh, you know, this kind of feels a lot like that. Uh, you know, you look at, I mean, obviously Cody Zeller is a big guy who, uh, you know, when he came back, that was a huge major decision. Um, you know, 
I guess more recently, uh, maybe not one of the best returning players in the nation, but definitely in the conference, Juwan Morgan uh, yeah. coming back. Uh, I'd say that he was probably the most recent example in the conference of having a guy coming back who was one of the guys. Uh, unfortunately, certain coach couldn't do much <laughs> with Juwan Morgan coming back. No, I'm not still mad. Um, but, uh, you, you know, I, I definitely think that TJD is – a preseason first team all American. He's one of he's that caliber of guy. He's going to be a, a fantastic player. He's in for a fantastic season. Uh, I'm excited to watch it, frankly. Yeah, as you said, it's a very select list of guys, especially when you put it on a national scale of guys that return to Indiana with this level of fanfare, with this level of of accolades, even already that TJD has. Um, Juwan Morgan wasn't one that I, I thought of, but you're a hundred percent right. When it comes to the big 10, that was huge to have him come back. Uh, I mean, but once you get past Yogi, once you get past Cody, you got to go pretty like DJ white might be the next guy on that list. Um, I don't know that he was maybe quite as high in terms of first team all American type of stuff that, um, TJD is, but I mean, he was a, a huge piece of a, team that most expected to contend so um certainly was a a a really big deal to have him come back but i mean at that point you're looking at the mid 2000s um and after that you're even you're going deep into the bob knight era before uh you start to to start you start to figure out more guys and at that point, that, that predates a lot of my knowledge of IU basketball, and I would leave somebody off and make someone angry. But, I mean, that, that gives you an idea of how rare it is to have a player like this coming back to your program and how why you why IU fans are excited. And then at the same point or at the same time, you look at the top freshmen coming in for Indiana uh, or for the Big Ten, and Indiana has arguably the top two. Jalen Hood Shafino and Malik Renault um, on Sports Illustrated were ranked as the, as the top two kind of exciting freshmen coming into the Big Ten. They're the two highest rated freshmen coming into the Big Ten based on just recruiting rankings, 247 sports. Um, I can think of it. There's obviously been times uh, when IU has had like one freshman that's coming in. You're, you're Romeo Langford's, you're your top fresh, I guess technically Noah Vonley might have been high on there. Uh, but guys like that have come in. Can you remember a time when I was going to have two of those guys on the roster at the same time? No. I mean, that is – it's. I mean, you look back at it, and I mean, even the classes that came in where it, there ended up being two guys, or you know, they, they didn't come in like that. I mean, you look at, you know, Thomas Bryant, Juwan Morgan, and OG Ananobi all coming in together. Um, you know, they they left as, you know, heralded guys, but, you know, it was really just Thomas Bryant who came in as the the guy everybody was really excited about. It's like, oh, you know, we got TV, and then we also got, uh, you know, a couple guys who, you know, maybe they could be something. Who knows? Um, you know, so I, I think to have not just one, but two of those guys who coming in, are already getting people excited. Uh, it really is a, a masterclass by Mike Woodson. Uh, I mean, because not only did he bring in those two guys, he's brought in really a, a whole freshman class to be excited about. I, I think that there's definitely things to, to be intrigued by uh, when it comes to each and every one of the freshmen who are coming in. <laughs> this reminded me of, as I was kind of looking back through IU recruiting and uh, just my – uh, semi-regular reminder of what the movement was supposed to be. Uh, because anytime you think of great IU recruiting classes, uh, now infamously that one comes up. Uh, but I mean, you were, you, you're right because I was looking at other recruiting classes, Vic and Will Sheehy were in the same recruiting class, but they were both three-star recruits. Uh -huh. And if you look at like Jordan Halls and Mo Creek and that recruiting class, they came in, it was an exciting class, but it was an exciting class because IU was really bad. And those were the guys that were going to come kind of help save IU basketball. And they did, but they weren't at the level of what Jalen Hood, Shafino, Malik Renault were. And 
they're not they're joining a team that's really good. It's just this unique blend of of having a top player and having top freshmen come in and come together. And I I can't remember anything like it in, in ever for IU basketball. And it's just rare in general for for college basketball in general to have a, a top player joined by top recruits. And man, it makes for a really really exciting time for IU basketball. I know I keep saying that, but I, I'm sure everybody listening. Uh, shares that sentiment as well. So uh, th- this kind of explains why we're so excited to to watch IU basketball. I, I'm going to be counting down the days, um, especially after IU football no-showed last season. I, they've lost me a little bit. They're going to have to to win me back. So I'm counting down the days till basketball now. Uh, we're going to look at some news and stuff we've missed throughout this week, get you guys caught up on that here in a moment. First, though... <clears throat> Today's episode is brought to you by Rock Auto. With the ever-increasing number of makes and models, it's now impossible for your local auto parts chain store to stock all the parts you guys need. So why bother going to the to the store, standing in line, being told the part isn't available once you get up to the counter? Skip all of that. Just go to rockauto.com right now, whether at home or in your pocket. <clears throat> saves you time. Saves you money. Um, there's no markup prices that you're going to get at a dealership. It's a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years. Uh, they have reliably low prices for every customer. They're going to have everything you need, whether it's a, a brake part, whether it's a tail lamp, whether it's motor oil, whether it's new carpets for your floorboard. Go explore their easy-to-use website today to find the solution to your auto part needs. Uh, go to rockauto.com right now. See all the parts available for your car or truck. Right, locked on in their how did you hear about us box so that they know we sit you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. RockAuto.com. So, because we had pre recorded Wednesday's episode, I've missed a good chunk of news this week. So, this last segment is just going to be getting you guys caught up on everything that's been going on, and a lot of it has been. Mike Woodson and the staff offering everybody in the class of 2024 <laughs> scholarships over the last week. Uh, <clears throat> start off with the bad news. Trey Galloway uh, underwent groin surgery this week. Recovery time expected to be around three months, 10 to 12 weeks or so. Uh, though he's not expected to miss any fall practice. If you're looking at three months from now, it's going to put him mid September before he will get back. So, should be plenty of time to get back on the court uh, and not miss any time. It was the groin injury he uh, sustained in the second half of the season. Had him out for a while. He was apparently playing through um, a lot of pain in the final games of the season to get back on the court. Uh, He kind of rested after the season to see if it was going to heal. It didn't, so he opted for surgery. Uh, Obviously, a bummer in terms of uh, getting off-season workouts in and things like that. But I guess how important do you think Trey Galloway is to this team that we've talked about how talented they're going to be next season? Man, you know, I feel bad for Trey because this messed up his summer. Uh, but, you know, I mean, the fact that he'll be back, uh, you know, he won't be missing, you know, the, the really important stuff. Obviously, off-season workouts are important, but it's not as important as, say, being available come, you know, the winter. Uh, so I, I think that he is a huge part of this team. Uh, he is, I, I don't think that he's necessarily the, the straw that stirs the drink that, that's more Trace and Xavier, but I, I really do think that Trey Galloway is the heart and soul of this team. You, you can see the difference when he's in the rotation versus when he's not. You could see it very clearly last season. Uh, he's just kind of the, the, the guy that makes everybody go, that you know, kind of pushes everybody. Uh, he brings the energy, brings the hustle. He does all of the things that make Southern Indiana dads very, very teary-eyed. Um, you know, he's kind of – I think that if this Indiana team is going to be, you know, a conference title contender, is going to be one of the better programs in the conference moving forward, he can kind of play that role of being, say, the, you know, our version of Brad Davison, you know, we love him and everybody else is going to hate him uh, for, for a lot of similar reasons. Uh, so I, 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 while I'm sad that, you know, Trey's summer is messed up, uh, I'm very excited that he's 
going to be okay by the time the important things come around. He's, he's just the ultimate glue guy that you need for those, those top, top teams. Uh, I think of Will Sheehy whenever I I think of Mm -hmm. Trey Galloway's role on this team and someone that makes an impact in a number of different ways. And Will Sheehy was huge for those two IU teams um, that made the sweet 16, won the big 10 things of that nature. So, He's going to be important, as you said. Sucks he's out. <clears throat> Happy that he should be fully healthy and ready to go once the season starts. Now, the rest of the news that we missed, I wasn't joking. IU has offered four different players in the class of 2024 this week. Three of them are top 50 guys. We'll start off with one that we talked about at the beginning of the week. Asa Newell. <clears throat> we mentioned he was going to be on campus for a visit, uh, I believe on Monday. He was offered on that visit. Uh, He is a power forward, number 37 in the class, uh, listed at 6'9", a little over 200 pounds. Importantly, he's a Montverde Academy product, as we talked about on Monday, and that's apparently a pipeline Indiana might have now. Uh, So the Hoosiers offer him. Uh, We're going to go through all these, and then we're going to talk about it here in a second. Uh, They offered... And I don't even know the order of all these offers at this point. I was just trying to round them up. Uh, They offered 2024 center uh, Raleigh Burgess, who is not currently ranked, but he's expected to be in the the top 150 when the full rankings are released. I think they only go to about 75 right now on 247 Sports. So he's going to be a top 150 guy. He visited IU on Tuesday. Uh, it's been a busy week for IU because they had, uh, as I mentioned, Newell on Monday, Burgess on Tuesday, Xavier Booker was there on Wednesday. Uh, I'm sure others have been there throughout the week. So it's been a, a busy week of recruiting. Aiden Sherrill, the 2024 forward, ranked number 46, another power forward, 6'8", offered by Indiana. And then Jaden Mustaf, uh, a 2024 kind of wing Uh, He's listed as a shooting guard in some places, a small forward in others. He's 6'5", seems like a guy that could play uh, in either spot. He's ranked number 40 in the class of 2024. I'm not going to ask you for any sort of wholesale scouting reports on any of these guys. My general thought is, I mean, how how exciting is it to see IU linked with so many of these top type of guys uh, in these recruiting classes now year over year? It's awesome. I mean, because we've seen the immediate results from Woody, uh, you know, obviously bringing in the guys that he's brought in this year. But, you know, it, it looks like they're building out. I mean, you know, looking at the class of 2023, 20, 24, uh, you, you know, there's a lot of these guys who are premier talents that are, you know, considering Indiana, which is good to see considering where the program has been recently. So <clears throat> you want to be a top program you need to be able to get those top guys year in and year out, um, you, you know, and those, you know, the places like Montverde, those are the places where you get those guys, as we've seen. Uh, so, I mean, if Woody can establish a pipeline there, that's exciting because there are a lot of really good prospects that come through that place. So, um, you, you know, it is exciting to see a lot of these guys connected to Indiana because those are the kinds of guys that Indiana be, needs to be able to get regularly if they want to, you know, maybe hang another banner someday. Uh, You need that elite talent. I would say the thing that I had perhaps the most reservations about um, coming into the Mike Woodson era was recruiting just because it's such a, just such a foreign concept to an NBA coach. I have to imagine just that's not something you do. And I, I figured that was where the biggest adjustment period would come. What I think he and, um, the athletic department and just everybody involved did a really good job of was surrounding him with people who were really good at recruiting and really understood what was going on. And if you've read about various profiles and whatnot, um, it seemed like early on, a lot of those guys did the legwork and then Mike Woodson was the closer. They, they get the recruits to Mike Woodson and he would close the deal. Um, which is awesome. And that's how you land guys like Jalen hood, Shafino, like Malik Renault. So it's interesting to see now, uh, Mike Woodson's obviously out there a lot more. He's a lot more comfortable with, with recruiting and whatnot. So 
I don't know how much that is still the case, but he's still the closer, it seems like. You get him in a room with the recruit and the family, and I feel really good about IU's chances. So uh, we'll see how they keep competing with all these guys. As I mentioned, Xavier Booker was on campus as well. That's going to be the big one to watch here in the coming months and whatnot. But they're competing everywhere for these guys. So exciting times for IU basketball, both in the present and in the future. Shout out to Mike Woodson, man. Amazing what yeah. he's done to uh, to just completely transform the just kind of perception of what IU basketball is, even as recently as a year ago. Um, I was not nearly this excited about IU basketball a year ago, and now I can't get enough of it, as I said. So shout out to him for, for everything yeah. he's done, and uh, hopefully we'll continue to do in Bloomington. Well, I mean, before we get out, I just wanted to say, uh, you know, there was one more recruit who people should be watching that uh, we didn't mention. Uh, I really like J.Q. Roberts out of Bloomington North. Uh, he's a class of 2023 guy, uh, really lanky, uh, really tall, uh, has a lot of explosiveness in his game. Uh, I've seen him play a handful of times uh, for Bloomington North just because I'm in the area. And he reminds me a lot of a Jordan Geronimo kind of player. I, I think that he's a really exciting guy to watch. A little under the radar uh, right now because he's a three-star guy, I think, by 247 Sports. But I think that now he's in his senior year. I think he'll get that fourth star and he'll start seeing more offers coming in. Right now it's more of an Indiana, Purdue, Iowa sort of deal. But I, I could see him getting some bigger offers as the senior year goes on. There's something that's just fun about keeping the the good talent from Bloomington and Bloomington as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Anthony Leal, everybody loves him as well. So uh, I'm all in. Absolutely. We'll continue to watch him as well. But thank you guys for making Locked On Hoosiers your first listen every day. Uh, we'll be back next week to continue previewing the football team now. Now that we got you caught up on all the basketball news. Now make your second listen, the Locked On NBA Big Board podcast. Raphael Barlow, Richard Stamen, Sam Ferris, and Leif Thulin give fans an in-depth look into the biggest prospects, the latest player rankings, and of course, big boards. Follow Locked On NBA Big Board every day on the Odyssey app uh, at YouTube or wherever you guys get podcasts. Follow us on Twitter at LO underscore Hoosiers. Uh, subscribe to the podcast if you haven't already. Leave a quick rating and review. Most importantly, though, guys, have a terrific Friday and a terrific weekend in LEO.